A minute to go before we uh, get things started in half number two of this high school football game. And if you're just joining us, uh, the halftime score, it's the Edgerton Bulldogs leading the Hicksville Aces at halftime. 14-6 to the score. It was, uh, well, kind of a rough and tumble first half. Uh, both teams uh, moved the ball up and down the field pretty well. But uh, the uh, Bulldogs, and actually, in a way, Hicksville is kind of lucky that it's only 14 points that uh, are on the scoreboard for Edgerton because they had three opportunities down in the red zone where they uh, shot themselves in the foot, a couple of turnovers and so forth. So uh, it could have been significantly more than the 14 points. Uh, they uh, had a touchdown, a successful two-point conversion, and then another touchdown uh, that was sort of given to them by a uh, pass interference uh, committed by the uh, Aces. Uh, just uh, with well, actually with no time on the clock at the end of the uh, second quarter, which gave them another crack at the end zone. They were able to uh, put the ball in, and uh, they failed the two-point conversion, hence the 14. Uh, the Aces, of course, getting it in the end zone uh, on a uh, touchdown catch uh, by uh, Peyton Tunis. Their two-point conversion attempt failed as well. So that's the 14-6 to score. As uh, we put uh, three minutes on the clock here at the end of the 20-minute halftime and uh, start counting down and get ready to get this second half of football underway. So a little bit rough around the edges for both squads in that first half. It looked like, like I said, it looked like the Edgerton Bulldogs were going to uh, take it to the wall for the Bulldogs here. When they first got started, they had a couple of offensive series where they were pretty much moving the ball down the field at will, and they really had the aces back on their heels. But uh, again, they got inside the red zone. They got down uh, within striking distance. And uh, again, they throw, the, throw an interception. They fumble the ball. Uh, again, shooting themselves in the foot. And uh, because of that, uh, again, it could have easily been another two or three touchdowns on the uh, Edgerton Bulldogs side of the scoreboard. The uh, Aces, on the other hand, uh, again, uh, they've uh, had some good offensive series, but they've only been able to get into the end zone one time. They've had their fair share of mistakes, too, and they have been costly as well. Uh, Garrett Crawl doing a, a pretty good job, uh, as uh, has uh, Fuller running the ball. But, uh, again, uh, not much in the way of the, the big plays. They've been grinding it out, but, again, they just have not really been able to connect. So they're going to need to, uh, again, uh, Try to cut back on the uh, penalties and to get that offense humming as, again, they're down. But like I said, the good news is only down by eight, and that is certainly far from an insurmountable league lead rather for the Aces football team. I did want to make mention here, we have a little time at halftime. I've had a lot of people mention, uh, because I know that uh, Bob Weatherhead and Denny Vetter mentioned it uh, while they were talking last week at the Eden game. I've had a few people ask me about the uh, Team Noah shirts, the new edition ones, the uh, the camouflaged ones. Uh, from what I understand, uh, they uh, the, the examples they had here last week uh, were uh, like prototypes. Uh, they uh, went over very well. They've had a lot of interest. Uh, so we understand that they are in the process of getting ready to be able to take orders for 2015 editions of the Team Noah shirts. Uh, they are not yet available. They're not yet taking orders for them. But, of course, we will do our best to keep you updated and let you know as soon as uh, those are available so you can uh, pick up your Team Noah shirts and wear them to support Noah Carrington as he continues his battle. We've already had one unexpected rainstorm here tonight, too. I guess we should mention that, too. Uh, when we started off, it was uh, a little bit warm. It was really, really muggy. But they were telling us uh, initially that they weren't expecting the forecast didn't have any rain moving into the Hicksville area until about 9 o'clock or so. So we thought we'd have the game uh, well underway or near the end. But we've had already one unexpected rain shower that has uh, moved through in the first half. So... We'll see how things go for half number two. 
Also should mention uh, that the uh, Bulldogs will be kicking off to the Aces, so Hicksville will have the ball on offense to get the third quarter started. And again, we'll keep our eyes peeled for uh, Hunter Evans. Hunter, uh, where's number 24? He took quite a shot late in the second quarter. So we'll see if he makes it back on the field tonight or not. Bulldogs got the ball teed up, and they're getting ready to kick it. They have a sort of a one hopper. A couple aces collide. I think Tunis came up with the ball, makes the grab, and uh, that's about the 38-yard line. Excuse me, about the 34-yard line. And so they're going to give it to them first and 10. And again, it looks like the 34-yard line. Well, we'll see the 33. All right. So, back to business for the Hicksville Aces. They're on offense to start the third quarter. 11.57 remaining. Garrett Kroll working quarterback out of the shotgun. First and 10 from their own 33-yard line. Kroll inside handoff right up the pipe. Fuller powers it across the 35-yard line, close to the 37 should be a pickup of about five. Brings up second down. Again, Crawl handing it off. Fuller, Fuller finds some running room. He breaks free. He's got one man around his waist. Can't shake him, but he doesn't pull. He doesn't pull Fuller down until Fuller gets inside the 45-yard line. And an official has gone down. He's back up. He's got his hand back up. That was unintentional. He was just in the wrong place at the wrong time. Fuller, great run from scrimmage. First down yardage for the Aces. As they move down to the Bulldogs 43 yard line. Three wide receivers on the near side towards us. Mason Hostetler out wide on the far side. Crawl takes a snap and he hands it off to Fuller. Fuller still on his feet, legs churning. He powers forward for about eight. Dylan Fuller once again making a statement here in the third quarter. Crawl again a handoff. Fuller shakes a couple and he's on his feet. He breaks free. He's got one man to beat. They get the angle on him and take him out at about the five-yard line. What a great run from scrimmage. Again, Dylan Fuller. He has been the Aces offense in this first possession in the third quarter. Just give the ball to Darren and let him go. There's a flag on the play, and everybody's walking back towards the line of scrimmage, so this might be... And it is going to be a hold against the Aces. That's probably why he was able to break free. It'll be from the spot of the foul. So that's really not too bad, though, when all is said and done, because that's still going to make it second in about three. Could have been a lot worse. Handoff. Fuller falls forward. That'll get to about the 35-yard line. That should bring up third in about one, maybe two. And we'll say third and two for the Aces. Another handoff, powering straight ahead. That should be good enough for the first down. And Fuller powers it down once again. They untangle themselves. And they're going to, oh, they aren't moving the chains. Fourth and one. And Crawl, no doubt about that, Garrett gets the first down. Garrett down close to the 31-yard line. That'll move the chains. And Fuller's going to come out after that series. He probably needs a little bit of a breather. That young man covered a lot of ground <laughs> in the last few plays. Clock continues to run. We're under nine minutes and 50 seconds here in quarter number three. It's a first and 10 for the Aces at the Edgerton 31-yard line. 
Handoff. That's Tunis. Tunis gets down close to the 20-yard line. Tunis with the carry to the 22. That'll make it second and two. Yeah, make that second and about a yard. Second and one. Tunis picks up nine. Pitch out to Peyton again, and Peyton again on his feet. They get him by the leg. He's bouncing around on one leg, but he gets down to about the 17-yard line. They're going to say his knee touched at the 18, but that'll move the chains. It'll be first down aces. So Peyton Tunis stepping up when Fuller leaves the game and producing good positive yardage just the same. Crawl has Tunis move up next to him. Direct snap to Garrett. Garrett hangs on to the ball himself. Crawl falls inside the 15 down to near the 13-yard line. So Garrett Crawl, quarterback keeper, picks up about five. So second and five. Fuller back in the game for the Aces. Dillon gets the ball. Fuller slanting towards the end zone, and he's in. Touchdown, Aces. Dylan Fuller from 13 yards out into the end zone. No flags, touchdown aces. And that narrows the gap. It's now 14 to 12. Aces cut the deficit to two. And it looks like they're going to go for two here to tie this game up. Ace is attempting the two-point conversion. And he's in. It's good. Fuller powers it in. And we're tied at 14 with 8-10 to go in quarter number three. And we've got an Edgerton Bulldog slow in getting up, but he manages to make it to his feet. So the Aces take the uh, kickoff and drive down the field and get into the end zone with 8.10 to go. It's Fuller running it in and getting the two-point conversion. And we're tied at 14. It's a whole new ball game. The Aces looking good on that offensive series. They came out and got the job done. One hold, but even that didn't hurt him that much. Spot foul only backed him up uh, a little bit, so... So Avios getting ready to kick it off to the Edgerton Bulldogs as they're getting ready for their first offensive crack at it in the second half. Salvador. Low liner. And it's going to go out of bounds at the 21-yard line. And throw the flag. Uh, march it off. Take it out to the 35-yard line. So that's where Edgerton will set up shop, first and 10. Bulldogs will break huddle. And again, their quarterback number seven is uh, Landon Thiel. Deal. Takes a low snap, rolls out, ball in the air. They're going for it all on the first play and uh, overthrows his man by about seven yards. Intended receiver number 12, Kobe Brady, but there was no way Brady was going to catch that ball. Way overthrown, and that makes it second and ten.
get themselves reset. Clock, of course, stops with the uh, incomplete pass. Hand off to number 25. Guillaume takes it near the 40. They'll take him down. They'll mark him down about the 39-yard line. So Guillaume picks up about four. So Bulldogs now looking at a third and six. Aces looking to get the stop here. They want that ball back. Fake. And now he's in trouble. He manages to dump it off. Caught by number 22. He's not going to be making the first down, but he's going to get within a yard. A couple of fake passes and finally a little dump off to Alex Michael. Michael gets out to about the 38-yard line where it'll be fourth and two. You've got to get across the 45 to move the chains. And I don't see the punting unit coming out, so they're going to go for it here. You can probably tell the Edgerton coaching staff uh, saying that there was a uh, there was a Aces player in the neutral zone, but he didn't make any contact and he got it back. But it was enough to throw them into a tizzy, and uh, the end result is that Edgerton caused a timeout. Their coach was not happy about that at all. No. So, like I said, they. Uh, there was a lot of noise coming from the Edgerton uh, coaching staff next door to our broadcast position uh, because, like I said, a Hicksville ace did go across, but he didn't make any contact, and he got back well before they set, so there was, there, was, there was really no offsides, but it flustered them so much that they, they burned a timeout. Like I said, the Edgerton coach, you could tell over on the far side of the field, was not happy with having to call the timeout. But the play clock was running. So here we go. Hand off to Guillaume. Guillaume gets the first down and then some. He's still on his feet. He's going to be corralled at about the 45-yard line of the Aces and brought down. So it'll be a first down for the Bulldogs. So at least they made it a beneficial timeout, and they uh, moved the chains, keep their offensive drive going. Deal. Again, handing it off. And again, that's Guillaume. And Guillaume again getting down close to first down yardage. And he is just shy. He picks up nine. It'll be second and one. Quick substitution. One of the uh, aces... Uh, Lineman got, got his bell rung a little bit, needed to come out. So here we go, second and inches for the Edgerton Bulldogs. Again, handing it off to Guillaume. Guillaume moves the chains, picks up about a yard and a half. More than enough, it'll be a first down for the Bulldogs. So they advance the ball down to the 34-yard line of the Aces, where it'll be first and 10 for the Edgerton Bulldogs. So we've got about 540 left to go in quarter number three. Logan Thiel dropping back, looking to pass. Puts the ball in the air, incomplete. And it'll bring up second and 10. Clock will stop on the incompletion. Tied at 14, Edgerton with the ball. Guillaume gets the handoff. Guillaume angling towards the 30-yard line. It's going to make it down to about the 31 before they uh, start driving him back. Bring up third and about seven. The 
Deal again looking to throw. And he's in trouble. He's going to have to get rid of it. Dumps it off. It's caught. First down yardage. Nice throw, making something out of nothing at the very last minute. Gets the ball to Michael. Michael takes it down into the red zone. Matter of fact, he might have even given him a first and goal. He did from the eight-yard line. So Michael's catch and run takes him down to the eight-yard line where it's first and goal for the Edgerton Bulldogs. Handoff. Still on his feet. Still powering towards the goal line. Getting down near the five. Guillaume carries it down to the five-yard line where it'll be second and goal. Field comes out, looks over the field, takes the snap. He's going to hang on to it himself. Nothing doing. Field's going to get dropped for about a two-yard loss back at about the seven. So Thiel on the quarterback keeper loses a couple. Where it'll be third and goal now. Thiel handing it off. Guillaume makes it to the five yard line and that's where he's brought down. So fourth down and goal from the five-yard line for the Edgerton Bulldogs. Well, here we go. Fourth and goal from the five. Deal works out of the shotgun, and they are going to blow the play dead. Timeout. Edgerton. They burn another timeout. That's only going to leave them one for the remainder of the game. So they're going to talk things over. I guess they really want to get into the end zone here. They're not going to take any chances. And I can understand it, uh, you know, even though it is burning their second timeout, they've had a real bad habit in the first half of having things go really badly wrong for them when they're down in that five yards away from the goal line situation. I mean, they threw an interception. They coughed it up. And, you know, they fumbled the ball. They had bad snaps. So, yeah, I, I can see that the coach wanting to make sure that everybody is on the same page here. At least let's hope that's the case, and it's not that they've got their wires crossed and their communications messed up and... They've burned two timeouts that they didn't want to use up at this point. So we'll see if they make it uh, worth the timeout. Fourth and goal from the five-yard line for the Edgerton Bulldogs. Steele working out of the shotgun. Puts it in the air. It's going to be way overthrown. Check, 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 check. There we go. Had a little headphone made, headset malfunction there. Couldn't hear myself for a minute. Wasn't sure whether it was still on the air or not. So it's first and 10, Hicksville, in the shadow of their goal post. Garrett Crawl standing on his own goal line. Quick handoff. And people are jumping all over the place. I think he might have lost some yardage there. And they only make it back out to about the two-yard line, so loss of three, so it'll be second and 13. Now they're only going to say he went to the three, so it'll be second and 12 now for the Aces. Crawl. 
ball. Again, handing it off. And again, not much there. He might have made it back out to the five-yard line. So Fuller can't make anything happen twice in a row now here. Third and 11. They get back out to the four-yard line on that play. Under two minutes to go here in quarter number three. Crawl takes the snap. He's going to hang on to it himself. Garrett still on his feet. First down yardage and more as he takes it across the 20-yard line out to about the 22-23. Nice carry for Garrett Crawl as he gets him out of a big hole. A fresh set of downs and some breathing room. 22-yard line is where they're going to mark it down. First and 10 for the Aces. Crawl. Again, handing it off to Fuller. Fuller might have got a couple. They're going to give Fuller credit for one yard. Make it second and nine. Again, they're going to give it to Fuller. Fuller breaking free out to the 30, where it'll be third and about two. Under a minute in the third quarter. Ace is trying to get something going here. Crawl straight ahead. And it's going to be mighty close. Needed to get out to about the 32-yard line. And they're going to say 32, and they're going to give him the first down. Garrett Crawl comes through in the clutch, gets him the two yards they need, moves the chains, fresh set of downs for the Aces, first and 10 from their own 32-yard line. 30 seconds left to go. Getting a handoff to Fuller. Fuller breaks free. The warrant for number 36, getting him around the ankles and hanging on. That's Derek Blue, by the way. Fuller might have been in the end zone, but Blue gets him around the shoelaces and hangs on, brings him down for a gain of nine yards. Crawl, dropping back to throw, puts the ball in the air, lies it off his hands and incomplete. Lies it with the drop on the sidelines. And that's the end of the third quarter. After three, we're tied at 14 between the Aces and the Edgerton Bulldogs. Well, as we get ready for the final 12 minutes of football here from Aces Stadium on this Friday night, we want to say another huge thank you to the Jim Schmidt family of automotive dealerships in Hicksville. Jim Schmidt Chevrolet Buick and Jim Schmidt Ford. I think Jim is up here in the press box tonight. And we uh, cannot thank them enough. They lend us their support and underwrite our Aces sports broadcasts of a football season. They're the ones that make it possible for us to go on the road and uh, cover all the away games. The uh, only away game that I don't think we're going to be able to cover is uh, Wayne Trace because they never have room for us. <laughs> Wayne Trace. But aside from that, uh, whenever we go on the road, whenever we are able to go to the playoff games uh, for the football season, plus in addition to the varsity, whenever we're out here for the uh, junior high or the JV uh, football games as well. All of that's made possible thanks to the generous underwriting support of the Jim Schmidt family of automotive dealerships in Hicksville and online at jimschmidtauto.com. Quick snap, crawl. Quarterback keeper. Crawl moves the chains. He powers forward across the 45 down to the 47-yard line. 11.56, and if he wants to make my wife happy, he'll keep it on the ground and keep that clock rolling. Again, Crawl hangs on to it himself. He gets about two. And we've got a flag on that play against the Edgerton Bulldogs. So Aces will get a few more yards tacked on to that two-yard Crawl run. It'll be first 
Oh, that uh, moves it up to the 48-yard line of the Edgerton Bulldogs. Oh, maybe not. All right, yes, it's a five-yard penalty. <laughs> four, okay, so they moved it down to the 47-yard uh, line where it is uh, first and about five. Snap to crawl, hands it off. Nope, he's going to hang on to it himself again. Garrett, first down yardage, still on his feet. Carries a couple defenders with him as he goes down to near the 35-yard line and another flag thrown at the end of the play. So they throw the flag near the end of the play, and we'll wait and see what the officials have to say about this one. Whatever the infraction, about three guys saw it because there were yellow handkerchiefs flying all over the place. Near the end of the play, well, we'll see. And it's going to be against the Edgerton Bulldogs again. And it's going to be another personal foul. So it looks like it was a late hit or a spear, 15 yards. And that takes it all the way down to the 19-yard line for the Aces. Nope, check that. They're going to place it at the 20. So the ball at the 20-yard line. Aces. And Crawl hangs on to it himself again, and he's going to go down to the 15. Gain of about five. So Garrett takes the ball down to the 15-yard line. Make it second and second and five. Snap. Hand off to Fuller. Fuller evades one tackle. Gets across the 15 down to about the, looks like about the 13-yard line before they stand him up. So he'll pick up a couple. That should make it third and about three. Down to the 13-yard line. Ace is looking to get the lead back here. Crawl, low snap. He hangs on to it, but there'll be a quick whistle there. And they're going to say that he went down, so the ball downed at the 23-yard uh, line, it looks like. Ouch. Excuse me, that's uh, the... Uh, 18-yard line. So that makes it fourth down, fourth down and six now. Garrett rolling out, gets the ball in the air, overthrows Tunis, incomplete. No flags, and the Aces are going to turn it over on downs at the 17-yard line. So they're going to leave the Bulldogs a lot of real estate to have to deal with. So the Aces offensive drive stalls at the 17-yard line. They turn it over on downs with 9.48. The Bulldogs take back over on offense. Field will bring them up. He's going to work out of the shotgun, too, as he has been all night. Blitz is on. Ball. Out to about the 20-yard line, gain of three. I think they gave it to Guillaume. Got about three. Clock will continue to roll, getting down to about 9.20 left in the, in the ball game. And again, since that uh, brief shower in the first half, we haven't had any rain. So things have dried off nicely. Thiel takes a snap, going to hang on to it himself. Logan Thiel working his way forward. Gets out to about the 26-yard line. They'll bring him down. 
He'll be about a yard or so shy of the first down. Make it third and one. So the Aces looking for the stop here on third and one. Want to get that ball back. Hand off, and he's brought down behind the line, and they're going to get it back. Aces get the job done defensively. They drop him for a loss back at about the 24. Fourth down and four. Still plenty of time, so... It's deep in their end of the field. I'm, I'm going to imagine that we're going to see the punting team come out. I wouldn't, I wouldn't risk it I down this far. Uh, nope, it looks like they're going to go for it. Dropping back to throw, ball in the air. Nope, that's all. Oh, what a nice turn of events for the Aces. They're going to get the ball back on downs at about the 23-yard line of the Edgerton Bulldogs. I'm not sure I would have gone for it on fourth and four that deep in my end of the field. You got almost eight minutes left in the game. You're tied. You know, why take the risk? But it's going to be the Aces ball. You know, we're, we'll, we'll take what we can get. They're going to give it to us. We'll take it. First and 10, Hicksville, 23-yard line. So Edgerton doing the Aces a big favor here. And the Aces helping out their cause with a great defensive play. Crawl. Handing it off to Fuller at the last minute. Fuller trying to cut it upfield. Nothing doing. Might have gained a yard, but I think they might have held him in no gain there. And we've got a Bulldog down on the field. He got uh, twisted kind of funny as he went down on that play. And it looks like it might have just been a cramp, yep. Maybe that's why he that's why he looked so funny going down because his leg cramped up on him. So they're going to work on him. Their staff will come out. And hopefully we'll be back in action before too much longer. The injury timeout, and we'll step aside. We'll be back. I think they got him up already. We may not need to step aside. Nope, they're still working on him. So we'll uh, step aside here briefly and uh, the injury timeout on the field. We'll be back and we'll resume our coverage as soon as play resumes here on Hicks TV. And they've got him up and walking off the field under his own power. And they're going to hold up the uh, resumption of play until the player clears the field. It's uh, Aces again with a uh, second and 10 from the 23-yard line. Hall working out of the shotgun again. Again, he's going to hang on to it himself. Ugh. Almost got away from number 26. Might have gotten a yard. That's going to bring up third down and about nine. So the Aces getting great field position to start this offensive stanza, but have not been able to make anything happen on their first two downs. Third and nine for Hicksville. Crawl fakes the handoff, drops back. Ball in the air looking for Greer. It's going to be intercepted, underthrown. And it was intercepted by the Edgerton Bulldogs, but a bit of a mistake because the player that intercepted it went down to his knee at the one-yard line instead of taking it into the end zone for the touchback. So the Bulldogs are going to get the ball first and ten but at their own one-yard line. And this game is such that the Aces can get somebody in the end zone. That two points right there might make all the difference in this game. So first and ten from the one. Hicksville's not going to be too upset about that. He's going to get him some breathing room out close to... I don't think he quite made it to the five-yard line. He might have picked up about three. Not getting up. And we're going to have another stoppage of play here. Not getting up. Is he is down. Guillaume was the uh, 
ball carrier. And he got out to about the four yard line and he is down. So again, we've got an injury timeout on the field. And again, we're going to uh, step away. And uh, we're going to hope everything is okay for uh, Guillaume uh, down there on the turf. And we will be back and we will uh, resume our coverage when play resumes here on Hicks TV. Well, it could be potentially a big loss for the Edgerton Bulldogs. Guillaume really took a shot and he's being helped off the field. He has been one of their powerhouses. He bought him a couple of yards. It's second and eight at the three yard line. But uh, yeah, at this point, a pretty, pretty heavy blow for the Edgerton Bulldogs. Quick handoff, spin move, still on his feet, brought down about the five yard line. And of course, uh, Hicksville would like nothing better than to get a three and out here or hold them on fourth down even. Uh, again, with the ball this deep in the Edgerton territory, Aces could not help but have some pretty good field position. And right now, it's a third and five. If they don't pick up the first down here, I'm going to guess they're going to bring out the punting unit after what happened last time, but we'll see. We still got another play. They got five yards to go. Dropping back, Thiel puts it in the air. It's tipped and it hits the turf. Incomplete fourth down. 5.55 on the fourth quarter scoreboard clock. We're tied at 14, and it's fourth and five for the Edgerton Bulldogs. And they're going to punt it away this time. Last time it was deep in their end zone. They went for it, and they didn't make it, and they gave the Aces a great field position. The, the interception turned it back over to Edgerton, but taking a knee at the one-yard line, put him deep in a hole. Now they're going to punt from underneath their own goalposts. Michael back to take the punt, gets his leg into it. Nice punt, fielded by Thiel at midfield or Peyton Tunis, I mean. Tunis gets the ball at the 50 and manages to bring it back to about the 48-yard line. And that's where the Aces will take over, first and 10. We'll see where they officially mark it down. Looks like they're going to give him another yard, so we'll put it on the 47. First and 10, and yeah, on the far side of the field, they're still taking a look at... Uh, at Guillaume, Guillaume like said he took a shot trying to get the ball out uh, from the one yard line. So I'm not going to be surprised if we aren't calling number 25's number for the rest of the night tonight. Crawl, pitch back to Fuller. Fuller gets it out to the 45 yard line, picks up a couple, second and eight. Again, hand off to Fuller straight ahead. He powers down to about the 41. That'll make it third down. And about four. Crawl. Again, hand off. Fuller. It's going to be down to about the 30 eight yard line that makes fourth and about one so fourth and one aces hurry up offense are going with no huddle snap crawl straight ahead and the surge takes him down and that's going to move the chains you could just see everybody they thought they had him stopped and then there was just this surge Crawl takes him down to the, he needed to get to the 47. He got him, or make the, they may get down to the 42. He got him to the 41, excuse me, the 37. Okay, they're at the 36. I'll get it figured out here. They're at the 36-yard line, and it's first and 10. That's the important thing. High snap, 
Garrett hangs on to it himself, kind of a broken play. I think he meant to hand it off to Fuller, but the snap was too high and didn't have time to do it. No gain on the play. Actually, they lost about a half a yard. So we'll say second and 11. Garrett checking the call from the sideline. There's another high snap. It's over Crawl's head. He's going to have to. He's going to have to eat it, and it's uh, going to be turned over. It popped loose. I think it's Edgerton's ball. It is the snap over Garrett Crawl's head. He tried to get the ball back. He was hit. The ball squirted loose. And recovered by Edgerton right at the 50-yard line where it'll be first and 10 Bulldogs. So once again, this game just keeps spinning around on itself. 3.38 to go, and we're still tied at 14. We're going to see if anybody can score here before the end of regulation to win this game. And right now, it could go either way. Number 31. Gimmick play, he's going to put the ball in the air, he's got a man open, it's caught. He's open, he's going to go into the end zone. Touchdown Bulldogs. They hand the ball off to number 31, Carlin, and Carlin throws it downfield where it's caught by Kobe Brady, and Brady takes it into the end zone, a 50-yard pass play. And that gives the Edgerton Bulldogs a six-point lead, 20-14. So Edgerton comes back after losing one of their key running backs to an injury, and they make that turnover burn for the Aces. 3.26 left in regulation, and again, Edgerton up by six. See what they're going to do here for the PAT. Field comes back out. Looks like they're going to go for two again. Make it an eight-point game. Logan Thiel hangs on to it himself, dives forward. I don't think he got it. No good. So the two-point conversion attempt fails, and it remains a six-point game, 20 to 14. And the Aces, wondering just what happened, it turned around that quickly. They're going to get ready to get the ball back and try to get something going offensively here. This has just been a, one of those games where you name it and it can happen. I wouldn't put anything past uh, <laughs> occurring for either one of these squads here. We've had a little bit of everything tonight. We've had fumbles recovered. We have fumbles lost. We've had passes intercepted. We've had some pretty heavy-duty penalties. We've had injuries on the field. We haven't had a, black, a blocked punt or a, or a safety, so there's still a couple of things on the menu we haven't checked off, but it's been an eventful night here at Aces Stadium. And here come the Bulldogs. Again, 326 left in the contest. Great things are going. Who knows? They might be thinking about trying their luck with the onside kick. Fuller back deep. And they do hit a low liner. It's caught. Number 13 reversing his field. Still on his feet. Diving forward near the 35-yard line. They'll bring him down at the 34. That was witty that... Uh, Caught the kick, and Witte gets it back to the 34-yard line, and that's where the Aces will set up shop. 3.21 to go in the contest, and Hicksville needs to get down the field, get into the end zone. A touchdown ties it. A successful extra point conversion puts him on top.
Aces come out. Ball working out of the shotgun again. Hands it off to Fuller. Oh, excuse me, I think that might be in Greer. Well, we'll see. He picks up about three. And closer to four. That was Fuller. Fuller. Fuller gets it out to the 38-yard uh, line. Second and six. Crawl dropping back. Ball in the air. Hostetler crossing over the center of the field. It's a little bit short. Hostetler had a good crossing route, but the ball was just a little bit short. And that'll make it third and seven. Or third and six, excuse me. 2.46 to go in the game. Crawl again dropping back to throw. He's going to have to run with it now. Garrett off and running, still on his feet, heading on the far sideline across the 40, near the 35 when he's brought down. What a great move by Eric Kroll and what good awareness on the field. Drop back to throw. There was nothing there. They opened up in front of him, and he uh, just tucked the ball in and took off, and he lopes down for a first down all the way down to the Bulldogs' 36-yard line. Excuse me, 37-yard line. Check that. First and 10 from the 37. Kroll. Hands it off to Fuller. Fuller powers forward, still on his feet. Heading down towards the 30-yard line and brought down. Fuller gets it down to the 31-yard line. Going to have a whistle here. And it's an official's timeout. Uh, we've got another player that uh, got up a little bit woozy for the uh, Bulldogs. That's uh, number 26, Cameron Jordan, who's being helped off the field. There's going to be a lot of Edgerton players that are going to be feeling tonight's game. They've had a few guys down on the turf throughout the course of the night tonight. Hopefully everybody will be okay. Back in action now. Crawl. Dropping back. Ball in the air. Caught. Tunis. 20-yard line. And he gets taken down. So Tunis, another nice catch. And he'll move the first down chains. They'll mark him down right at the 20-yard line. One forty-six. Left in the game. Crawl. Hand off to Fuller. Fuller. Nice run around the end. He's heading for daylight. Into the end zone. Touchdown. Touchdown aces. And Hitsville ties it at 20 with a minute and a half left in regulation. They're going to kick the extra point. Avios has had a pretty good year so far. And if Salvador can split the uprights for him, that's going to give him a one-point lead, 21 to 20, with a minute and a half left in the game. So here we go. It's either going to be an Aces lead or we're going to be tied at 20. Ball's down. Kick is up. And it's no good. No good wide to the left. And we're tied at 20 with one and a half minutes left in the contest. Well, we may be playing past the fourth quarter tonight. I think we're going to see the onside kick here. 
The Aces will take a shot at it. They'll give up a little field position and for the chance of uh, being able to get the ball back right away. So one minute, 30 seconds exactly on the clock. That's what's left in regulation. We're tied at 20. What has been an exciting game to get the GMC season underway. It's been rough around the edges, but it's been kind of fun to watch. Salvador squibs it. Bounces around and it's fouled on by the Bulldogs and they're going to take over at their 48 yard or 44 yard line, excuse me. So Edgerton's going to have it first and 10 on their own 44. Good field position. 129 to go. Navajos. Trying to get the onside kick, but it didn't bounce up. It didn't ricochet around like they wanted to. It just sort of hung there by on the ground. And it was an easy catch for the Bulldogs. So here's Thiel. Thiel handing it off. Number 88 turns the corner. He's up the sidelines. He's fast. He's cutting back across the field. The Aces finally get him, but not before that uh, he gets to the 10-yard line. That was Nichols again. Number 88, Isaiah Nichols, and he rumbles down to the 20 to the 10 yard line. First and 10. And uh, now they throw it, pitch it out. 31 makes the grab. He's headed for the end zone. He's brought down at about the three yard line. Catch and run for number 31, Keith Carlin. So Carlin gets inside the five. Tunis saves the touchdown. 53, 52, 51. The clock is moving. Logan Thiel, second and goal. They drop the ball. People are running all over the place. And we'll wait and see what the officials say. And the Aces recover the fumble. So the Aces get the ball back. On their own, it's going to be about the three or four yard line. There's another injury on the field. There was a young man with his helmet off. 42 seconds left in regulation. And again, I don't mean to harp on it, but this is like the fourth time tonight that the Edgerton Bulldogs have been inside the five yard line and self destructed. But it seemed like they had the golden opportunity for the easy score. So they fumble and lose the ball on the three-yard line. 42 seconds. The Aces need to go 97 yards. It's a long way to go. They've got all three of their timeouts. Crawl. Takes the snap. Ball in the air. Caught by Tunis. Tunis gets out to about the 32-yard line. He's knocked out of bounds. Stops the clock at 38. Aces run up to the line quickly. They're going to mark him out at the 33. They start the clock up again. Snap. Crawl drops back again the pass again a caught catch by Hostetler Hostetler steps out of bounds at about the 45 Nope, they're gonna say he was actually out of bounds at the 43 So he stepped out of bounds after he made the catch when he turned to head up field 30 seconds Get people set. Crawl. High snap. He handles it. Drops back again. Looking. Screen pass out to Fuller. Fuller trying to get something going. 
reverses his field. He's still on his feet. Cross back across midfield. Heads for the sideline. Gets out of bounds at the 47-yard line of the Edgerton Bulldogs with 16 seconds left. And it's going to be a hold against the Aces. They're going to back him up. And that's going to be 10 yards from the spot of the foul. And they're going to say the spot of the foul was at the Aces 43-yard line. That's going to back them up to their own 33. Ouch. That might. Well, we'll see. Sixteen seconds. Ace is still with three timeouts. Back at their own 32-yard line. Crawl backing up, looking downfield. Garrett puts it in the air. It's intercepted at the 30-yard line. Hostetler strips the ball and gets it back. He strips the ball and gets it back, and the Aces are going to have the ball at the 30-yard line with 10 seconds left in regulation. What a heads-up play. Mason Hostetler, the ball gets intercepted, and Mason literally stripped the ball out of his hands. It was a clean fumble, and the Aces are taking a timeout. After that, they probably do need a minute or two to collect themselves. They're going to officially mark the ball at the 32-yard line. It'll be first and 10 for Hicksville. There are 10 seconds left on the clock. We're tied at 20. And with the clock stopping for an incomplete pass and two timeouts left, the Aces might be able to take two or three cracks here before time expires. And we head to overtime. So the Aces break huddle. Here we go. Crawl's going to work him out of the shotgun. Garrett drops back. He's off and running. Garrett crossing the midfield, heading towards the end zone, takes it down. And do they call timeout in time, or is time expired? We're going to wait and see. There might be a second on the clock. The ball is going to be down at the 14-yard line. And we're going to see whether they got timeout called before time expired. And they did. So there's going to be one second on the clock. And the Aces are going to have it at the 14-yard line. So they're going to have one chance to end it in regulation. They're going to burn a timeout, I think. Yep, they did. So they've got one timeout remaining. What a game this has been. And we'll see whether we're going to wrap it up in regulation or if we're going to wind up putting some extra time on the clock tonight. Here we go. One second left. It's for all the marbles here. Let's see what kind of a play they've got set. Crawl takes the snap. Puts the ball in the air. And we're going to see. Hostetler went down. Then they're looking for a flag, but I don't see one. So that's the end of regulation. And we're going to wind up after four, tied at 20. So we're going to have some more football here on this Friday night. 
And while we're waiting for them to get things set and ready for the overtime, we'll say another big thank you to the Jim Schmidt family of automotive dealerships, our football broadcast underwriters here on Hicksville Community Television. Both Jim Schmidt Chevrolet Buick, Jim Schmidt Ford, the Jim Schmidt Truck Lot, JimSchmidtAuto.com. They lend their support to us throughout the season, not only for high school football, but in the fall we're also uh, covering volleyball. And uh, as the schedule allows, uh, we try to work in some coverage for track, or excuse me, for cross country and for, uh, for golf. And boys and girls, and even for football, in, in addition to the varsity, we try to get at least uh, one or two games on for the JVs and the junior high kids as well. And, of course, uh, Jim Schmidt is there for all of that. They uh, underwrite all of our Aces Sports broadcasts and help make our coverage possible here on Hicksville Community Television. So I always ask you, if you see Jim or his lovely wife, Carol, or any of their employees, make sure you let them know how much you appreciate being able to watch the Aces Sports coverage on Hicks TV. And remember, if you're in the market for a vehicle, new or pre-owned car, truck, van, or SUV, either go online or stop by and check out the great selection at the Jim Schmidt family of automotive dealerships in Hicksville or at jimschmidtauto.com. All right, we're going to get ready for another coin toss here. been a while since we've done an overtime game on the football field in the gridiron, but here we go. Two team captains, Garrett Crawl for the Aces and Alex Michael. Well, Alex at least is able to walk around. He's got his helmet back on after taking that shot a while ago. So they'll meet midfield. And they'll explain things to them. Here's the coin toss. that taken care of. I'll shake hands. Garrett will head back to the sideline. And we'll get ready for overtime. So the officials are getting their paperwork taken care of. No break there, Hoddle. And we'll head down to the end of the field by the concession stand. Looks like we're going to have a brief respite here. A 30 minute delay. So evidently there was some lightning that was seen. And that's going to translate into a 30 minute delay. So the teams will head into the locker rooms and we will take a break. We are tied at 20 at the end of regulation and we will be back with the overtime.
let me let me fill you in on what is going on here because at this point you're probably looking at your screen saying things look a little bit different than they did when uh, we uh, took our break uh, at the end of regulation. And uh, I'll let you know that through the magic of video editing, uh, we've uh, actually leapt forward a significant amount of time. Uh, the uh, game ended at the uh, end of regulation on Friday night about 9.30. They were tied at 20. And uh, as they got ready to get things started for the overtime session, uh, visible lightning was observed. And, of course, the OHSAA rules are that when that happens, um, the players are, you know, they go undercover, and you have to wait until there, it, it, there has been no visible lightning for at least a half an hour. Uh, at 9.30, that meant that the earliest the overtime would start uh, was 10 o'clock last night. Uh, there was other lightning after that. It got to be about 10.15 uh, or so, and uh, the uh, lightning was still uh, coming. As a matter of fact, it was beginning to pick up. Uh, the radar uh, image did not look good. And at that point, the officiating crew uh, and the coaches got together, and they suspended the game until 10 o'clock Saturday morning. And it is now just about 10 o'clock on Saturday morning, and we're back at Aces Field. So we're leaping ahead as you watch the coverage. Uh, it'll just be a, a blink of an eye, but it has been a long night, and uh, we're getting ready to get the overtime underway. Uh, the uh, weather conditions are uh, in a way better. Uh, there is no lightning, but uh, we still have rain, and it uh, is starting to pick up a little bit, actually, here in the last few minutes. We've got some pretty good gusts of wind, and there's even been a few little tiny bits of hail falling from time to time. But again, no lightning, so everyone is confident that we will be getting this uh, game in as we uh, move through this Saturday morning. A lighter crowd, obviously, with the rain. Plus, uh, here in Hicksville, uh, there's a volleyball tri-meet going on over at the Hicksville High School at uh, 10 o'clock this morning. So uh, that'll cut into the uh, crowd a little bit as well. New officiating crew that will be with us this morning for the overtime session. And uh, we should make note, uh, too, that uh, for Edgerton, uh, one of their key players, Andrew Guillaume, who had a great night last night, will not be suiting up and will not be on the field today because of the concussion protocol he took quite the shot yesterday uh, and uh, was still able to come out for the coin toss, which uh, they have redone, by the way, for the uh, overtime this morning. But, again, he will not be dressed today, and he will not be uh, taking part in the overtime uh, play. Uh, I should also mention that uh, because it is Saturday morning and uh, the schedules being what they are, I am here. But I am the lone Hicks TV person, uh, neither Amy nor Kate able to make it back this morning. So uh, you'll have to sort of bear with me because I am going to be running the camera and calling the action for you. So the camera work may not be quite as, up, you know, may not be quite as good as <laughs> they're used to with Amy and Kate uh, handling the camera chores. But I will do my best to uh, get the action in the frame for you and uh, still uh, call what is going on so that we know what's, uh, what's happening. As you can see, though, from the uh, Aces cheerleaders down on the uh, side of the uh, field, uh, it is breezy, and uh, the rain is uh, coming down. So it's going to be a wet field, and, uh, again, all of the uh, problems that uh, come with that, uh, with the, the footballs being damp and uh, traction issues and so forth. So we'll wait and see. Again, at the end of regulation last night, and the game, uh, like I said, the game wrapped up at about 9.30 or was and was suspended uh, a little after 10 o'clock. But at the end of regulation, Aces and the Bulldogs tied 20 points apiece. So we will be beginning with, uh, with the overtime starting out here in uh, just a little over a minute from right now. So, uh, it's uh, again, it's uh, going to be the overtime session. Uh, the teams both, you know, it, it could have wrapped up in, in regulation, obviously, uh, it, you know, for, for you watching this not that long ago. But, uh, Edgerton uh, three times uh, in the red zone knocking on the door of punching it in uh, for a, a touchdown, which would, would have been the winning uh, which would have been a win for them. Uh, again, uh, interception, fumbles, other problems. Uh, the Aces also had their opportunities. They missed uh, an extra point conversion that would have given them a one-point victory. And so, uh, and both those teams uh, during the warm-ups uh, were practicing their kicks, too, because uh, when you get into the overtime, uh, being able to kick a field goal or get that extra point, uh, it can make the difference. So as you can see, the Aces coming out. Taking the field and over across the way, here comes Edgerton. And again, uh, they were out. Uh, they uh, did the coin toss and got everything all situated. So uh, we'll be uh, ready to get underway here with the overtime. 
Again, it's 22-20, uh, all tied up. And they're going to put the ball on the 20-yard line where it will be first and 10 to get things started here in the overtime. And it looks like, again, the aces are going to be uh, on offense first here. And so, again, we're not sure, you know, with the, it's overtime, so we may only be here for a short span of a few minutes. Uh, we may be here for a while. We'll, we'll see how things go. Garrett Crawl, Fuller behind him, sort of dotting the eye. We've got Hostetler, Peyton Tunis, Greer out on the near side, Lysit out on the far side, and here we go. Snap and crawl, powers forward, getting down near the 10 yard line. Looks like they're gonna mark him down at about the 11. That which uh, will make it second and one. So both teams will be a little bit rested, but uh, still kind of banged up from the night before. High snap, pitch out. And nothing doing there. High snap, I think, threw them out of the rhythm. They tried to get it over to Fuller, and Fuller tried to do what he could, but uh, he's going to be dropped for a bit of a loss, and that's going to make it third and about four. Again, a different officiating crew working this morning than was with us last night. And some personnel changes due to injury. Another high snap, handoff. And Fuller. And Fuller carries it down to about the four yard line. And that'll be good enough for a first down. They'll move the chains. First and goal for the Aces at the four. So Crawl, get the call from the sideline. Aces would love to punch it into the end zone here. Garrett hangs on to the ball himself. He might have picked up a yard. We'll see where they put him down. And they say, nope, it'll be second and goal from the four. Well, no, they're going to give him a yard. So second and goal from the three. So Crawl, the quarterback keeper, picks up a yard for the Aces. Another high snap, handoff to Fuller. Fuller banging his way down towards. They're going to, he'll be stopped short. So Fuller gets back to about the three yard line where it'll be third down. So now third and goal for the Aces in the overtime, tied at 20. Crawl again, hands it off, and it's Fuller. We're waiting for official work, and it's in the end zone. Touchdown, Aces. So the Aces punch it in to make it 26 to 20. And we'll see what they want to do about the conversion. Now, last night, with one exception, the Aces were going for two every time. The one time they did try to kick the extra point, it was wide to the left and no good, and they're setting up for two again. Again, Crawl's going to keep it himself, and he should be able to get in with no problem, and he does. Two-point conversion is successful. And the Aces go up by eight, 28 to 20. Of course, we're not done yet. Because now the Edgerton Bulldogs will get a crack and they'll need to score eight to keep things going. So 
Hicksville does just about exactly what they wanted to do. The best possible thing that could happen for them does. They get the touchdown. They get the two-point conversion. And that forces Edgerton now for their portion of the overtime to do the same just to keep the game going. So Edgerton, the Bulldogs now have no choice but to get in the end zone and then convert for two. So we'll set it back up on the 20 yard line where it'll be first and 10 for the Edgerton Bulldogs. Their quarterback, Landon Thiel, number seven. And again, we will not see number 25, Andy Guillaume. He is out today because of the concussion protocol. Thiel, quick handoff. And the Aces are gonna swarm him down at about the 15 yard line. Gain of about five. And I think that was Jordan with the carry. So again, second and five now from the 15 yard line. Deal takes a snap. Again, the handoff and again, Brought down, handoff this time to number 36, Derek Blue. And Blue needed to get to the 10 yard line to move the chains. And it looks like he got to about the 13. Now they're gonna mark him at the, at the 13 yard line. So it is third and three now for the Bulldogs. Feel. Hand off to number 88. He's trying to turn the corner. It looks like he's going to make it. Heading towards the end zone. He dives in. And it's a touchdown for Nichols. Makes it 28 to 26. So the Bulldogs answer. Now they're going to have to go for two. If the conversion fails, the game's over. And if they make it, then we'll reset and do it again. So Thiel, as they look for two, hand it off. And they're going to stop him. And that's it. Two-point conversion fails. They hand it off to Nichols. Nichols can't get in. And that's the ball game. So the Aces get the win in overtime 28 to 26 a game that took two days to get into the books and the aces are going to celebrate and i don't think any one of them now is going to mind having to uh, get up on the saturday morning and drag themselves out to the field and get dressed and play some football the teams are going to congratulate each other and we're going to get ready to wrap things up Again, uh, it won't seem this way when you watch it on TV because, again, we're going to be able to just jump right ahead to this overtime. But it was a long, stormy night and kind of a rainy start to this overtime. But it was worth it as the Aces pull it out and uh, they get in, score the two-point conversion. Edgerton able to answer with a touchdown, but their two-point conversion attempt fails. And so the final score in overtime, Aces victory 28-26. to that moves the Hicksville Aces to three and one now on the football season, and they are one and zero oh in the Green Meadows Conference. I want to say a big thank you to the uh, staff here at uh, Hicksville Stadium. Again, always making us feel very welcome. It's like a home away from home for us, and. Uh, my thanks, too, to Amy and Kate for being here on Friday night. Uh, not able to be with us today, but I appreciated their help uh, very much uh, yesterday. I want to thank again, too, Bob Weatherhead, Denny Vetter, for filling in for me last week for the Eden game. Uh, next up for the Aces, uh, they'll be making the trip to Fairview 
for week number five. We hope to be able to travel along with them and have that coverage for you here on Hicks TV and on the Hicks TV YouTube channel. And finally, I want to say another big thank you to our football broadcast underwriters, the Jim Schmidt family of automotive dealerships here in Hicksville. The brand new Jim Schmidt Chevrolet Buick and Jim Schmidt Ford, the Jim Schmidt truck lot. And of course, you can find them online at Jim Schmidt Auto. Dot com And without them, our coverage of Aces football would not be possible. So we cannot thank them enough. Well, it's been a long time getting here, but it was worth the trip in the end as the Aces again pull out a big win in overtime on a Saturday morning after the game gets suspended at the end of regulation Friday night. Final score on this soggy Saturday morning from Aces Field, it's Hicksville 28 and the Edgerton Bulldogs 26. And again, for Kate and Amy Murphy, I'm Bill Murphy with Hicksville Community Television saying good morning and good sports.